Alright. As soon as DOS box is ready, load up QBasic. Press escape. And I pressed Alt Enter. I held down the Alt key and pressed Enter to get to uh, this full screen mode. So we basically left off with the temperature conversion that showed the Fahrenheit and the equivalent Celsius values in a little table form. So I'm going to try and jam that back out again real quick. I'll probably screw it up, but let's see. So clear screen, always a good practice with QBasic. And then we set a variable to hold the Fahrenheit values. We're just going to call it fair. And the way that I've forgotten how to do it was you type dim first to basically stands for dimension to dimension a variable. It originally was for dimensioning an array, which is a sequence like a list. But anyway, um, that's how you define a variable in basic is you type the dim and then I could type the variable name. So FHA R and then we could say as int or it's as integer, I'm sorry. So that's the long-winded way. And so the other option is to say, to just do that. Let's see here if we set this one to 44 and then come down here and and 55 so either one of those apparently is equivalent because it set both of them to be 55 so it's basically your choice as to which which way seems to make the most sense if you do define it only if you define it with this uh, that deal right there I'm holding shift and pressing the down arrow and then delete if we do that and then reference it without that, let's see what happens. Zero. Hmm. So fair and then percentage of five zero. Weird. What a trip. Okay, so then if I say FHR percent. So it's probably best to avoid uh, stick with one format or the other, or at least stick with unique names. Don't try and do it differently because right here we'll check it out and see like if we print out, we're getting 44 and 55 now. Hmm. I didn't notice what I did different before. The oh. Or I had done the dim FHAR as integer. That's weird that line didn't capitalize. Now they're 55, 55. Okay, so if you do this dim FAR as integer, then this line that basically says that this variable is going to become this. Let's see here, 44 and 44, and then of course the 55 and 55. Huh. Okay, yeah, so basically, apparently typing out longhand like that makes it, makes these two the equivalent. Um, if you don't type this out longhand, then you get this variable that must be interpreted I'm assuming because normally well I get a more strict type based language like I'd mentioned before they want to know specifically what type like is it a number is it a letter whatever and what type of number a big number a small number a decimal number um, and then you stick with that so this is pretty interesting I didn't recall this feature 
So let's see if we change this to a string. Type mismatch. I have now a string. Hmm. Just underlined it and pressed F1. So a string. Let's try right clicking on that. Nothing happened. Variable length string variable. So anyway, I'm totally goofing off like for right now. Okay, so let's figure this out. A string would be F H A R dim dim F H A R as a string. Run it. Duplicate definition. Okay, so yeah, that that tape that overrides this basically makes it like that doesn't so right here right there it defines it as a string right there it tries to read to assign it a number it's not in quotes but if we set that in quotes it would let us do that So I wonder if we did a Fahrenheit string. It's equivalent there too. And do a home, comment that line out. Doesn't like that unless we declare it as a string. So we could also just say a string right there. Ooh, interesting. So there we are back full circle again, where since we didn't use the dim statement, this is a separate variable and it's defaulting to be an integer. Which is cool because that's what uh, languages like C we usually default to like a standard integer. In QBasic, it would be probably 16 bit. Um, in most modern Cs, it's going to be 32 bit or maybe even 64 bit. Okay, so that will see integer. And then back under and press F1. It's a 16 bit signed integer value. So. Sign means it can have a positive or negative, which cuts the effective amount of numbers that can represent in half. Because you have half of them become negative and half of them become positive. So really there's still the same amount of different values, but you can't have 16-bit um, would be 65,500 and 36 possible different values from 0 to 65,535. So anyway, I'm done goofing off. That's just something to note there. We shouldn't be, we should just keep it simple with the variables for now. That's way too much info. All right. So we're going to have the Fahrenheit variable, and we'll just put that percent sign, and you can read that as a number or value, the Fahrenheit value, gets, it's going to start out at zero, and then we're going to do it just like we did before and say while um, the Fahrenheit value is less than 300 is what the upper bound in the C programming one and then we're going to do a little indent and print the uh, the Fahrenheit value what it's current currently at a comma to tab over the column and then we'll print we'll punch in the equation right here so it will divide 5 by 9 first then it will multiply that result by the Fahrenheit value minus 32. So right here, this is kind of a good time to bring up formatting. You can optionally put the spaces in, and usually that is a good idea. Um, 
but whenever you are kind of cramming a statement in or an expression into a, a larger statement it's considered all right to go ahead and squeeze some values together so we'll go ahead and do that right there so that should print that Fahrenheit value and then we'll go ahead and increment our Fahrenheit value to uh, Fahrenheit value equals the old Fahrenheit value the current one plus 20 so 20 would be called the step value right there and then we'll out dent and type w end for while end and go ahead and run it with f5 and there's the full table pretty much like it is in the c1 i think in the c1 they actually print let's go ahead so right there we didn't actually print the 300 because we didn't use a less than or equal to right here so let's try it with that and there we have the 300 included and then we need to go ahead and add the header we don't need to but just keeping consistent we'll print a little header it's just outside of the loop prints one time and we know it will all line up so Fahrenheit and then if we end the quote on that string and do the comma that will tab space over the hard tab the full column over and then Celsius Celsius I totally spelt these wrong cells see us where is Fahrenheit okay and f5 and there's the table headers on there okay cool now let's try converting this to a for loop and a for loops really effectively the same thing but what we do in the for loop is we bring this little initialization down here or up here we bring it closer oops I use the old uh, we didn't shift delete and then come down here and shift insert okay so this Fahrenheit initialization initialization is part of this while loop right here it's initializing this variable so they're kind of related in that sense and also this increment right here is related so if we consider those are all three parts of the loop construct and combine them together maybe um, sometimes that's a better way to do it just for readability especially if this while loop got really long uh, it's just it's a trade-off you have to consider with your own code design you're the one who's most likely to read it later so it's entirely up to you but another option is to change this to the for loop so just right here I'll just change it to four and then I'll hit F, underline it again and hit F1. And we can see for a counter variable equals start to end step increment. So down here for the example, it says for I, which is very typical, usually I, J, K, they're in alphabetical order right there, um, stands for like incrementer or increment, that type of a thing. That's really common commonly used in high-level languages for a loop counter so 4i equals 1 to 15 print i well, that's a good example let's just do that 4 Fahrenheit well maybe I say oh, let's just do that but I'll just end up messing with this one okay 4 Fahrenheit equals um, 0 to 300 and so we can get rid of this now because we're already initializing Fahrenheit down there to zero so that's less lines of code that's usually a good thing and it's all right here we can see it on one line and then that step if we go I'm gonna hit home and then F1 and then we can see at the end this optional step increment so we want to step 20 I'll just hit escape and end and add step 20 and so that will get rid of this adding 20 to the Fahrenheit itself it will just do that every time through the loop so and then we also can get rid of this WN let's see if this needs an end F1 so then it has a next 
and then you say which counter so that tells it which if you have multiple nested for loops this tells it hey go back to the one named I so next and ours is called we could have named it I but we named it that all right let's check it out pretty much the same exact thing so that's the equivalent in the for loop and now with this one we have the uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion let's try and flip it around the other way that's in the C programming exercise 1-4 so if we have this equation, well, let's talk about, use this as an excuse to talk about the first like refactoring sort of optimization. This is really the optimized version. I would assume that to plug the equation, plug the formula right into the statement, um, then there's no extra variables created. It's handled when it's when it's needed and stuff and right then and there but it kind of messes with the readability in a simple program like this that's all that's going on so it's not really a big deal but in a bigger program or a bigger for loop anything more complex than this all of a sudden if you have other equa other formulas that aren't um, as obvious as a Fahrenheit conversion thing it could be all sorts of different stuff that is just even if you knew what the what the formula was computing you still might not even understand what that has to do with the bigger picture of things or whatnot so sometimes it's better just to hide all that stuff away so that we don't see it and it takes up brain power of like what's going on here you know we have to stop and reinterpret it and all of that kind of a thing so what we can do is I'm holding shift and using the arrow keys to just highlight it and then I'll hit shift delete to cut it out of there and I'll just plug this equation in up here somewhere I keep calling it an equation it's a formula of course and then we'll call this the well, maybe this would be better as just a function. Is that too complex for now? Yeah, that's... I don't know what I was thinking. This is going to go into a function. So a function is like a name thing you can call and be able to plug this away somewhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and shift end and then shift delete that again. Bring that back up. I believe up here there's somewhere to so they're called subs like sub procedures in QBasic and you can click there and say I guess you can how do you add them view subs edit inactive okay so I guess to, I forget how to get the thing to kick in but if, if you do just type sub and then a name we're gonna figure this out the hard way I guess F1 sub the name and the parameter list so the name of the sub procedure up to 40 characters long with no data type suffix and then for the parameter list one or more variables that specify parameters to be passed to the sub procedure when it is called. Um, this is a little bit tricky because so static means that it will save the the state of its variables between calls, which we're not going to do that just yet. When you call the sub procedure, you can specify the argument's values will not be changed by the procedure by enclosing the argument in parentheses. Okay, that's what I was kind of curious about. So I just went down to the bottom of the program and I'm typing sub, and we're going to call this, this one converts to Celsius, so we'll call it 2. Cell 
CS. And then in here we'll put a Fahrenheit value. We'll pass in that Fahrenheit. And we're putting it in parentheses because this is the name of the function or the sub procedure. And this is the value we're going to pass to it. Okay, there it goes. It kicked in and gave us a little sub procedure window that's like that's it right there so I'm gonna space space and then I'm gonna shift insert to plug that back in and I believe we have to type return maybe F1 so I clicked in this to give me this little bar to click down here the example the rim line uh oh so how do we return a value Parameter list statement block. We need a function, not a sub. Because a function returns a value, a sub technically doesn't. So it looks like it's pretty much the same layout, but we put a function instead. And then the name of the function gets the value. Okay. So don't be afraid to look in those help files. People do it all the time with all languages. So what we'll do is we'll change this to a function. I know this is confusing, but it isn't in the long run. So function is just like a sub, but we want to return a value back out. And our name is 2 Celsius gets this value back. Okay. So this would be a good time to save if you're saving your program. We can go back to this view thing, this view subs F2. And there's two Celsius, which is what we're in. I double clicked on it, view subs. Or untitled is the main program, unless you saved it as something else. So now right here, we can call that function. So we can say two Celsius. And then we can just pass it that Fahrenheit value. If it makes it more readable for you, you can do spacing like this. Basic will probably change it as soon as we leave the line. Yeah, they did. Okay, so let's try this F5. Bam. There it is. So it's effectively the same exact thing. But it's maybe a little, arguably a little more readable. Because it says 2 Celsius, you know. Print 2 Celsius of Fahrenheit or from Fahrenheit. And that hides away those details. So I'll hit F2 and 2 Celsius. So this might be in a whole other file in other languages, or it just might be further away in the file. It might be above or below, wherever you're at. When this saves the file, it really saves it all to just one big file. These aren't, even though it's in a different window like this, they just do that for readability to keep, keep the complexity down. I just double clicked on that. Okay. So there it is, that's the for loop. What else? I guess we gotta reverse it is the last little challenge for one exercise one five. Modify temperature conversion program to print the table in reverse order, that is from three hundred degrees to zero. So that we got pretty far on this one too. So right there should be pretty easy to figure this one out. We'll say uh as I say that, I'll probably mess it all up. But anyway, we're going from 300 to 0. And then we'll probably have to step in a negative 20 direction like that. So let's hit F5. Looks pretty good. All right, so that's how easy it is to make that change. Especially with that for loop where everything's just right there. Usually I think of for loops as finite loops. If you know like a specific thing in general, like a specific range, I'll usually lean towards a for loop. Um, and the while loop is more for like an infinite loop or if you're on the fence and you don't even know just start coding it out maybe as a while loop in basic they offer like the while and two and all that stuff so let me see if I can get there pretty quick click in there scroll down go to the while wind so The do loop would be a better so while while when's really simple um pretty much any language is going to have at least that while loop like everything else is just 
a higher level implementation of that. The do while or until, basically a do while loop would be exactly a while loop, right? Um, and saying until is kind of like saying, is like putting a not operator in other languages, which is like an exclamation point sometimes. In basic, I think it's just the greater than and less than signs together in the opposite order, but anyway that's how you say like you can say do while this condition is true or do until this condition becomes true so depending on if you want to do something you know depending on whether or not something's true or false whatever makes the most readable sense to you I mean you could effectively probably use either one and then if you just do a do and you don't put in anything in these square brackets is going to be optional and then the curlies with the or operator is going to you know one or the other um, if you just do a do, it's going to drop in and run the statements inside of that loop one time no matter what. And then you can say loop while and put your condition down here instead. So you can either have the precondition, which has a possibility of skipping the whole statement block altogether, or you can, you know, just run it once without having to set some, like, strange flag or something. That's really good for, like, user input where you know, like, I want to prompt the user no matter what. I want to at least print this prompt once. And then if they don't give me something I can handle, then loop, you know, print an error message or something and then loop infinitely until they do. That's that's one example of a do loop. But anyway, I wouldn't worry too much about like, oh, what do I use a do? I never use do's other than that situation. Um, and in languages that don't have a do loop or that I'm not familiar with them having one I'll just do like a while one or a while true like a while infinite loop and then I'll just have it break out of that loop once I get the get what I need but yeah just um, maybe lean towards a while loop and if you can think of the initialization of the variables the test condition and the increment all together then maybe a for loop, especially the more finite loop, would be better. Anyway, I'll finally shut up. That's that. That's a lot more stuff for this next one. But as you can see, even with all those features, look at that's you know the same or less lines of code, less lines of code than before, and we've actually stepped up the complexity. I mean, technically, yeah, there is a uh, there is this sub function, and those lines of code count too, but. It's probably about the same amount of lines of code. And this is partitioned off. It's a little bit, you do have to start partitioning your thinking a little bit. Um, but once the weight starts setting in, that makes things a lot easier. And if you follow, it kind of took me some dinking around because I wasn't used to the basic syntax and stuff, but pretty much a function is what other languages are going to offer. This whole distinction, it's one of the things basic got a little bit overly confusing at least most basics did was like the difference between a function and a sub procedure and a all these other different things like that um, they're basically all glorified versions of a function a function that doesn't return a value or a function that stays in scope with the rest of the code versus not like whether or not it's inlined all sorts of stuff like that but really um, those are just optimizations those aren't things to worry about right now if you're beginning they're just things to know that yeah if you're wondering if there's ways to tune like where this is at and how this variable scoped and stuff like that it's all there but um, when in doubt this is the model right here just use this function keyword and do that um, return an expression in C if you don't have anything to return you usually just return zero you can also have a void function that doesn't return anything in there as well but anyway that's that and I almost totally forgot one little last thing like I said that I would show how to convert from um, right now we have from Fahrenheit to Celsius and then also show how to convert the other way so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type another for loop like this one once you get more advanced, if you're a beginner, that's bad practice to duplicate. You want to keep your code dry. Don't repeat yourself, D-R-Y. Um, but right now, just to keep it simple, I'll just 
basically duplicate this step negative 20 um, we're gonna call this Celsius though we'll just call it cell and we'll say print same thing but with Celsius instead and we'll call it 2 Fahrenheit and it will take that Celsius value and then we'll say next cell all right and we get an error because there it thinks this is an array that sequence I was talking about don't worry about that right now but it's not it's a function we haven't defined yet so I'll go right here and just like the other function we'll just call this one instead we'll say uh, function So we'll take that cell value. Got to spell function right. And then this formula would be we're going to assign it to Fahrenheit. Uh, we'll get the return value of Celsius times. 9 divided by 5. We'll print that in parentheses. And it will be a plus 32. And the way you get that is from the the old function was um it was Fahrenheit wait Celsius equals uh, 5 divided by 9 times Fahrenheit minus 32 and so what you would do is you would do uh, divide both sides by 5 divided by 9 and that would effectively turn the right hand side into a 1 and then the left hand side would be the same thing as multiplying it when you multiply it by the inverse fraction so it would become C times that uh, 5 divided by 9 equals F minus 32 and then you would just do the you would add 32 to both sides so as you can see it playing out right there C times 5 divided by 9 plus 32 equals and then it would be F because when we add 32 to that side so you can see that that's the equation up there is 2 Fahrenheit equals Celsius oh I forgot to flip this over 9 divided by 5 because multiplying it by the inverse fraction is the same thing as dividing it the other way so that's how you end up with that equation so that all looks good hit F5 subscript out of range to Fahrenheit okay F2 to Fahrenheit what's going on with that oh, I need to do like a shift F5 to restart it no Let's see what the help says an array was referenced with the subscript Okay, this is not an array. Run is restart. Start. Still there. Out of range. 300 down to that. 2 Fahrenheit. 2 Fahrenheit. Cell percentage. Oh, I spelt it wrong right there. So maybe in that type of a case, it would be better to just keep it short of a name. Restart the program, and there it is. It's running um, F2, and then 
so it's running this first list and then it's running the second list so we'll put a little print and then we'll print another one right here it will be Celsius and of course Fahrenheit So it, the output went too fast, but you can see the second table right there where it has the Celsius instead, and then the Fahrenheit on the right. So is there one that is the same? Oh, well. Okay, so that's that.